The violin has captured the imagination of musicians and listeners since it was first invented 500 years ago. Little more than a carefully crafted wooden box, the violin produces a rich sound that's steeped in mythology and legend. Indeed, the violins most coveted by musicians are either antiques or replicas of violins crafted by masters from the Italian Renaissance. Today, a few skilled luthiers strive to continue this tradition, building violins to order. They are true architects of sound. David Gusset of Eugene, Oregon, has been a violin maker for 35 years. In 1985, one of his violins beat 212 others to win the Triennial Stradivari International Violin Making Competition in Cremona, Italy. He's the only American ever to win. And the violin hasn't changed in over 400 years. It's the essence of beauty. Of course, you know, if you're a woodworker, it's kind of like one of the highest goals is to, is to be an instrument maker. And then among the instrument makers, the highest goal would be to make a violin. I mean, it's just, there's, there's so many different levels of violin making. And some are just, you know, they might as well be made on a machine. Something that is so small, so lightweight, and yet, you make something that can actually fill up a concert hall. I mean, a huge concert hall, one little violin on a stage. Recently, David visited the University of Oregon School of Music to hear his violins played by Professor Fritz Gerhardt. They're very easy to play. They have a beautiful sound, a beautiful range. They respond quickly. So when you draw the bow across the string and you put a finger down, the notes come out very easily. If you don't have a good instrument, you can't express as much because it doesn't have as much range, doesn't have the options of color, the options of projection and tone and timbre. And if you don't have those options, it comes out very flat. And even if you're a good player, there's not much you can do with it. It all starts with a bow drawn across a string but the eventual sound depends on how the violin enhances the string's vibrations. Every tiny detail, the design, the nature of the wood, the varnish, every millimeter of thickness, they are all vital to enriching the music with the violin's unique accent. Today, David is starting a replica of a violin designed by the 17th century master Stradivari. Well, it takes me at least two months to make a violin. I'm consciously thinking about fashioning each little part of the violin to its ultimate shape. Essentially, I want to have the least amount of material for the greatest amount of strength. And so each piece, you know, you have to really become that piece as you're carving it to think about what's going to make that piece strong or what's going to make it flex in a certain way. I want my instruments to last for hundreds of years, so I have to think about all those things as I'm, as I'm carving. David's muses are Andrea Amati and the legendary Antonio Stradivari, who many believe perfected the violin in Cremona, Italy during the 16th and 17th centuries. Some 400 years later, their violins are still played by the world's greatest musicians and sell for millions of dollars at auction. For David, the challenge is not only to replicate the master's work, but to find his own inspiration through their method.
Even though I'm making a copy, I mean, the, the violins and the instruments that I make have a lot of my character in my interpretation of that, of those particular makers. I'm trying to understand what is it about the design of those instruments that is so unique. The way the lines are, the way they flow, your eye just wants to wander and appreciate every part of it. It's almost like looking at nature. Understand how hills erode and how the valleys fill in. I was always torn between art and music. I want to see something that excites me, that's something that is expressive, and someone who's, he puts all the essentials there, but then the degree of aesthetic freedom is to create something unique, something beautiful.